All right, thank you for coming out this morning. My name is Jill Moore. I'm a graduate student in G. Ping Wang's lab at UMass Medical School. And today I'm going to be talking about two different topics. The first is the encyclopedia that the ENCO Consortium is working on. And the second is variant annotation using two different tools um, from ENCO Consortium groups. So the first question is, where is this encyclopedia? So as Mike Pazin already talked about, um, ENCODE stands for Encyclopedia of DNA Elements. And so far, ENCODE data producers have generated thousands of ex um, experiments in humans, including DNA-seq data, transcription factor chip-seq, histomark chip-seq, and a wide variety of other experiments. But the question remains is, how do we actually integrate these experiments and assays together, and how do we integrate data from other groups such as Roadmap so we can actually annotate these functional regions of the genome? And then how do we build and visualize this encyclopedia from these functional regions? So this is a list of uh, different genomic annotations that you can look at, and it certainly isn't um, an entire list. There's some that are quite on the simple side in terms of they only require one type of experiment or one type of assay to look at, such as gene expression or the uh, process peaks from DNA-seq or ChIP-seq. But then you have more complicated annotations that require you to merge and combine different data sets. So for example, if you want to annotate regions of the genome like Chrome HMM does, which you'll talk about later today, or per, um, perhaps predict target regions of regulatory elements. And what we're going to be talking about today is actually um, annotating candidate enhancers and promoters. So right now we've been working on this, and this is our current pipeline for doing so, and this work is all done by Michael Picaro in our lab. And our first step was to actually define what we call DNAs master peaks. And see, so these peaks are a set of unique, non-overlapping peaks, and they're representative of <coughs> DNAs peaks that you see in a region. And so these peaks are going to span all data sets, and they collectively cover about 20% of the genome. So we incorporate both ENCODE and Roadmap data together to generate these master peaks. And so this is done by um, John Stam's lab, and this is just a, a quick visual of how this is done. So you have these different cell types here, as well as tissue types from Roadmap, and you have all of these called DNAs peaks. So you actually merge them, so if you look visually, so that they're all on top of each other, and this is your uh, linear genome, and we are going to pick out a representative peak for this entire cluster. So in this case, we would use the peak with the highest signal, which in this case is this peak that's labeled 48. So by doing this, we we're able to get a representative peak for all of these DNA uh, clusters of peaks across cell and tissue types. We next, after we have this list of master peaks, we separate them into two groups. We have the TSS proximal group, so these are all the master peaks that are within a two kilobase window of a TSS, and then we have all the other peaks, which are the distal peaks. We, our next step is to then annotate <coughs> these peaks using other data sets. So one option that we do is intersecting these master peaks with transcription factor chip seq peaks from all different cell types. And the other step is actually looking for enrichment in histomark signal. So the way we actually do this is we look to see, is this peak compared to just random regions in the genome that we select enriched in a particular signal? And what this looks like, this is an example here uh, done in GM12878 cells. This is looking at distal DNA master peaks and the enrichment in this signal compared with the background. So the background here is this light green. So you can see that most of these random regions that we select aren't enriched in H3K27, but these uh, TSS distal master peaks that we see are actually highly enriched in H3K27 acetylation signal. So by essentially creating this background distribution, we can create a cutoff and select anything that's above this cutoff um, as being enriched in this signal. So for this process, we uh, focused on four different histone marks. Um, we did H3K4ME3. K9 acetylation, K27 acetylation, and K4ME1. And each one of these has uh, slightly different properties. So for example, H3K4ME3 is known to be enriched at actively transcribed promoters, whereas H3K27 is usually enriched at active enhancers. So right now, this is, uh, these are the current annotations that you can use and apply to your own research. So we have uh, two groups of uh, regulatory elements, and so we have proximal regulatory elements and distal regulatory elements, and these are based on the proximal and distal DNA master peaks. 
We also have two groups um, that incorporate transcription factor binding. So these are the proximal and distal master peaks that are annotated with the transcription factor peaks. And then finally, we have candidate promoters and candidate enhancers. And these are the proximal and distal master peaks with the enrichment in the histone marks as well. So the next question is, how can you access these annotations? So this is the ENCODE portal that Mike Cherry just showed. And here, if you look under the, the data um, tab, there's a tab that's um, labeled annotations. And so if you go to that tab, you'll actually see a little brief explanation of what I'm talking about, as well as um, an option to uh, visualize any of these annotations on the UCSC genome browser and WashU genome browser. And here you actually have a listing of all the tracks that um, I'm talking about, and you can actually download them locally if you want as big bed files, or you can uh, download them um, to your uh, local cluster or server as well. So this is just a quick visualization of what um, these tracks look like on the UCSC genome browser. So here you actually have a gene here with the transcription start site, and on the top is um, um, proximal regulatory elements in the dark green, and the light green we have distal regulatory elements, and then we have candidate promoters here, and each one of these tracks is enrichment in a different histone mark. We have distal um, uh, regulatory elements that are annotated with the histone mark, so we call these candidate enhancers, which you can see each line is a different enrichment in a histone mark. And then here we actually have um, all the transcription factor uh, data that's been intersected with the regulatory elements. So we both have proximal and distal as well. If you want more information about any of these particular regulatory elements, so this is clicking on one of the um, proximal elements, you can actually see which cell lines, uh, cell types and tissue types went into creating this element. So for example, for this um, proximal regulatory element, all these different cell types were uh, the individual peaks that went into creating that master peak. These are some other useful tracks um, to incorporate into your analysis um, that are on the UCSC genome browser, including the different gene tracks, uh, the gen code annotations, and there's also other uh, ENCODE tracks such as the integrated regulation, and then also the genome segments uh, from tools such as Chrome HMM and Segway. Um, we, uh, Michael's also incorporated this data on the WashU epigenome browser. And so if you prefer to use this, we also have all the tracks on here. And once again, they're separated into proximal and distal um, regulatory elements and candidate enhancers and candidate promoters. Um, if you click on one of these uh, regions for more information, you'll once again see which uh, cell types and tissue types went into creating this particular element. So this... Um, slide is just for your own information if you want to use these genome browser links. And so uh, these are just some future directions of the project. Uh, Michael's hoping to make this uh, whole project open source. Um, and he's currently working on generating mouse annotations as well. So in case you use um, mice as a model organism, you can actually use an analogous encyclopedia that's created the same way as the human one. And then finally, we want to add more data. So we want to actually refine our use of transcription factor data. Since certain transcription factors bind and enhancers versus promoters, we'd like to incorporate this data into our project. And then finally, incorporate other data such as RNA-seq and the 3D um, contact data like ChiaPet and HiC. And then finally, um, also use tools such as Chrome HMM and Segway to further uh, define and annotate our encyclopedia. So now changing gears a bit, um, I'm going to be talking about variant annotation using Regulum DB and Hapleg. So the motivation behind this is that I'm sure you've heard at this conference and even earlier today in this session, is that the majority of variants reported by genome-wide association studies are non-coding regions of the genome. And often the variant that's reported by the GWAS is not necessarily the causal variant. So the motivation is that by using ENCODE data, you can actually annotate non-coding regions of the genome and try to figure out how these variants are contributing to the phenotype that you're interested in. So these are two tools from ENCODE um, groups. The first is Regulum DB, and the second one is Hapleg. And so Regulum DB is from Mike Cherry and Mike Snyder's labs. And what's nice about this tool is that it actually gives you a score for how likely a variant is to, to disrupt transcription factor binding. So, and these scores are based on the different lines of evidence that overlap your variant of interest. So, for example, 
There's evidence such as, is your variant at e has your variant been annotated as an EQTL? Does it overlap a transcription factor binding site? Does it overlap a DNA's peak? So depending on the different combinations of these lines of evidence, you will actually have a different score for each one of these variants. And the lower your score and the higher the letter, the more likely it is to affect transcription factor binding. So if you actually go to the website, this is what it looks like. And you're able to enter your data in a variety of ways. You can enter your SNP IDs directly. You can enter a range that you're interested in. Or you can also upload uh, bed files and VCF files if you have a lot of SNPs that you want to investigate. So in this case, I just chose a, a region on chromosome 2 from 20,000 to 30,000. And when you click Submit, your results will be presented as follows. So in this particular region, there was 44 SNPs. And it will rank them by um, highest or most significant score to lowest score. So if you want to find out more information about one of these SNPs, you can just click the, um, the score itself. And it will bring you to a page that has a whole bunch of data on it. So it starts at the beginning by having just a, a small snapshot of the UCSC genome browser. And here you'll have uh, ENCODE tracks, so for example, uh, DNA hypersensitivity sites, transcription factor data, um, and some other information like conservation and other SNPs in the region. As you scroll down, you'll first uh, see data about protein binding. This is where you'll find information um, for which transcription factors are uh, bound and overlap this region. So in this case, we have a, um, a protein CEB, CEBPB, um, which is bound in this region, and you actually have cell type information as well. You also have um, a tab called motifs, and so there's two types of motifs here. There's motifs that are calculated just based on sequence, which are the PWM category. So this is based just on the probability weight matrix for the motif. And then you also have a category called um, footprinting, which refers to DNA's footprints. So you, for those, also you have cell type information as well as the actual logo. And then you can have um, a reference as well for where these uh, PWMs or these footprints were originally reported. We also have um, a table for chromatin structure. So this is where you'll find DNA seq and uh, in some cases fair seq information. For all these cases, you're going to have cell type information as well as the original source of the data and then any other additional information such as possible uh, uh, chemicals that were added for the assay. Finally, you'll also have histone modification data. In this case, you actually have chrome HMM annotations, which you'll learn about um, a little bit later in the session. So we have um, the predicted regulatory state, as well as what tissue type this state's predicted in. And so this is all from the roadmap data. So for example, in this case, you have um, that this variant's an enhancer that's predicted in the esophagus. So if you want to more systematically um, analyze your variants, you can also download all this data. So you, and if you go to the downloads page, you can download the entire database so you can investigate um, a little bit more systematically. And also, if you go to regulum.stanford.edu slash GWAS, you'll actually see um, curated sets of um, variants associated with different phenotypes and diseases. And you can download, for example, an entire list of annotated variants associated with aging or asthma. So you can also, if you're focused on a particular disease, you can also go about investigation that way. We're now talking about Hapleroreg, which is a tool from Manolis Kellis' lab. And currently, it's on uh, version 4. So previously, it was version 2 and 3. So this is just a recent version. And it works essentially the same way at the beginning, where if you want to investigate a certain SNP or a certain region, you can query that in the box. So here, I'm actually looking up the same SNP that we just looked at in, HAP, in um, Regulum DB. This time, when you hit Submit, however, you'll notice that there's actually a list of SNPs as opposed to just one SNP that you queried. And this is because Haploroid will list all other variants that are in LD with the variant that you queried. So here the variant that we queried is in red, and by default it uses um, a European LD um, structure, and it reports all variants that are, have an R squared of over 0 0.8. So this way you can actually investigate not only the SNP you're interested in, but possible SNPs that are also in LD that may be driving this association. So when you look on this page here, it's a summary of each of the SNPs. And so you have information, for example, about the LD in both R squared and D prime for the uh, queried variant. You have information about the reference allele, the alternative allele, and the frequencies in different populations. 
And then you also have an overview of, of the different data types that your vary intersects. So for example, if it's predicted to be a promoter region or an enhancer region by Chrome HMM, you have that information there, as well as if it's overlapping a DNA hypersensitivity site or a transcription factor binding site. So if you want more information on a SNP, you can actually just click on it, and you'll be brought to a detailed view for that SNP. So once again, this is actually where all the information is as well, if you want more information. So you have uh, details about the sequence, um, for example, the reference alternative allele. You have information about the closest gene, both annotated by GenCode and RefSeq. You also have this nice chart, which is new in version 4, where you have every single um, epigenome that was um, looked at by the Roadmap Epigenomics Project, as well as a description of this tissue, and then whether or not it overlaps an enhancer or um, promoter or any of the Chrome HMM annotated regions. So using uh, two different models, which you'll hear about um, later on. So if, for example, in these cases, it's predicted to be an enhancer in these particular cell and tissue types. So it actually gives you the entire matrix all together so you can look all at once. Also, you have data, once again, about um, proteins that are bound. We see, once again, CEBPB. -E and then we also have information about EQTL -E studies as well. And the final piece that I just want to talk about is um, these regulatory motifs. So once again, just as we saw in Regulome DB, that this overlaps a motif for CEBPB -E as well. But what's nice is that you also have calculations for the log odds score for both the reference allele and the alternative allele. So if you actually want to see how much the SNP may be changing the motif, you can actually have a, a quantitative assessment of that. And so this is just a page uh, talking about the different options that you can use. It's really important that you make sure to use the correct population uh, during your investigation. So you can uh, see there's the different uh, HapMap and 1000 Genomes populations listed there. And you can also change the uh, R-squared value that you want to use. And the final feature I want to talk about is um, you can actually investigate gene sets as a whole that have been, uh, so, sorry, variant sets as a whole that have been associated with different diseases. So these, these curated lists where you can look at individual studies or combinations of studies for a particular phenotype. So in this case, we're going to be looking at all these SNPs that are associated with asthma in a European population. And when you run your analysis, you'll see um, results like we saw before, but you'll also have this nice table where you're actually looking for enrichment in enhancers that have been predicted in different cell and tissue types. So here, you can actually see uh, there's these different um, cell types and tissue types, and you have the observed number of SNPs for your particular category in overlapping these regions, as well as the expected number if you looked at all SNPs, or the expected number if you looked at other SNPs in the GWAS database. And so you can see, for example, your asthma steps, there's enrichment in uh, lung cell lines, which is, um, might be clinically relevant to what you're looking at. Um, so just to finish up, uh, I'd like to really point out uh, Michael Pucaro, who did a lot of the work with the encyclopedia, as well as Somia, who's recently graduated from our lab, as well as all of the other um, members of the ENCO consortium, as well as the STAM lab, who did all the work with the DNA master peaks. So if there's any questions, feel free to come up to me afterwards. Also, if you want more information about the tutorials, I have more in-depth uh, tutorials for both of these topics um, that are on the ENCODE website.